Hello, my friends. May God bless you. All of you. All of you. And may the spirit of peace come to possess each of you the spirit of understanding, the spirit of life, the spirit of the supernatural faith, the spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the mind of Christ. May He come to possess your mind so that your understanding may be open, so that your spiritual eyes may see God in His Word, in His Holy Word. We've been speaking about what Jesus said to Nicodemus, that he who is born of the flesh is flesh. And he who is born of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. And therefore, Nicodemus, you have to be born again. What Jesus said to Nicodemus, he speaks to every religious person nowadays as well, those who are charitable and good and they think like this, oh, I belong to church A, B, or C, I read the Bible, I have a diploma in theology, I'm a pastor, an assistant, a bishop, I'm a, a church worker, I'm a church official. But none of these titles guarantee that you have been born of God. None of these. Absolutely none of them, because Nicodemus was a ruler, he was a prince, one of the main leaders of the Jews. Just for you to have an idea, our faith, our Christian faith is based upon the laws and commandments of Judaism, the prophets, the Psalms, the Proverbs. And Nicodemus was one of those men who had been basing his life within this religious background. But Jesus said to him, you need to be born again. But then you may ask me, Bishop, he had faith. I know he did. But Nicodemus' faith, as the faith of the most religious people nowadays, I don't want to judge anybody here, but that's what we've been seeing clearly. The faith of religious people is a natural faith. It's practicing. They practice what is easy to do. What is easy, let's say, inverted comma here, to sacrifice. Is it difficult to be baptized in water? No, they have, the person goes and speaks to the pastor, I want to get baptized, and they go to the water. It's easy. It's easy for you to partake in the Lord's Supper. You just have to eat a piece of bread, drink some grape juice. It's simple. It's easy. It's easy to raise up your hands and say, Oh God, I praise you and I worship you. It's easy for you to read the Bible. It's easy for you to pray, Oh my God, help me, bless me. Oh God, bless my family. It's easy easy, very easy to follow some doctrine from the Bible. But the difficult part is to sacrifice the heart, the will of the heart. You who are watching this series Kings, you've seen that. 
David was a man after God's own heart. Look at the spiritual level that he was in. He had been chosen by God. But David, David committed a horrible mistake, wicked, evil, he was unfair, he went against everything that he preached, let's put it this way, everything he believed in, and he sent the most faithful soldier, one of the most faithful soldiers he had, he sent, he sent him to die, his friend, just to hide his sin. He was cruel, very cruel. However, you can also notice in this series Kings, it's another story here, but I would like you to know that. Remember that we spoke about Jesus yesterday, that he was hanged naked on the cross, he was humiliated, put to shame, sacrificed, he suffered a true hell there on the cross since the moment he was arrested. So, all of this was an injustice because he was innocent. And the same thing when you watch the series Kings, you can see, for example, that Uriah was a faithful man loyal, a good man, righteous. He was a, a righteous man. Come on, he, he was a person who represented Jesus in this world. Uriah represents Jesus. And David represented the people of Israel ungrateful, disobedient, rebellious, sinful, unfair, cruel. It's good that you don't forget that whenever you watch the series Kings on Record TV or on Universe Video, you are going to see that and you are going to be angry at David, angry at him and those who were around him and that induced him to do what he did. So, you can verify that it's easy, it's easy to believe in God. In a natural way, it's easy. But the difficult part is to believe in God in a supernatural way. And this is the faith God wants from us. The faith that the Bible passes on to us is a supernatural one. It's the sacrificial type of faith. Isn't it what Jesus said? He said, whoever wants to come after me, let him deny himself to deny the desires of the heart, the lusts of the heart, to deny that, you know, the person did evil towards you and immediately you have that urge to seek revenge and to keep a grudge. You have to deny yourself, you have to deny this feeling and not keep any hard feeling against that person. This is difficult, very difficult, but this is to deny oneself. Because to simply go to church is easy. You just have to walk there. You get the car, the bus or whatever, and you go to church. It's simple. To practice, let's say, religion as Nicodemus did, it's easy. But it's difficult for you to live with someone who cheated on you, who was cruel, ungrateful. A person, let's say, like Judas Iscariot, which we have the most nowadays in this world, isn't it? And you have to say, I forgive you, I forgive you, but you truly forgive. This is difficult. So, you can notice that faith 
a natural faith, is for those who are born of the flesh. Because they are natural. They were born from a natural way and live a natural type of life. So, the faith of those who live by a natural faith is a faith that doesn't involve sacrifice. And because of that, people deceive themselves with their religious ways. That's the truth. You see that when Adam and Eve sinned, they noticed that they were naked. And then obviously the devil suggested, look, get some, some leaves and cover your nakedness. Get some leaves there and cover your, your, your shame. So the devil always comes with an easy suggestion. Easy, very soft, we can say. But that leaf that they used was not going to last long. They would have to always be changing to remain covered. And this leaf nowadays is religion, which makes the person think that they are okay with God because it covered their nakedness, their sin. But within, they are still living sin. So many people live with a leaf, as it was the case of Nicodemus, and as it's the case of all those who are religious, that worship God with their lips, with their feet jumping, dancing, all those things that you already know. But within their heart, they don't care at all. The heart is being satisfied by corruption, by lie, by deceit, by sleeping around, adultery, yes or no, by fornication, fornication, by grudges, by the desire to seek revenge, and all these things. And the person is like this. On the outside, they look great, but on the inside, you know that they are rotten. I remember, just as an example, I can speak about that. Before, when I was, when I was in church for two years, because I didn't know Jesus, but I came to know the Bible when I was 16, 16 to 17 years old. When I was 18, almost 19, at the age of 19, that's when I had my experience with him. But I, as a person who lived by a natural faith, I used to go to church, say my prayers, give my offerings, and so on. But outside, I was somebody else. Or the same person, but I was, I was very moody. I was temperamental. I had a very difficult way. I, I was difficult to deal with. Very difficult to deal with. So, when we were then born of the Holy Spirit, when finally... I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus when there was a surrender, when there was a total surrender. Then, yes, a new person was born within me. I remember that I didn't speak to my sister, my sister who loved me. I didn't speak to her for over a year because of my difficult way of being and proud. And then, I would go to church to you, lift up my hands, accept Jesus, I would sing, I would sing praises to God. Dear friend, 
unless a person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, as I said yesterday, the water is the water baptism. The person buries their nature, their old ways, their personal opinions. They bury their pride, their vanities, their personal projects, their dreams. They bury everything, all of their body, their physical body, their emotions, and their spirit as well. Then yes, that's when the Holy Spirit comes and makes them a new person, a new person. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. So, when the Bible says that my righteous shall live by faith, this faith has nothing to do with the natural one. Nothing to do with the natural one. For example, the ten leprous men, all ten of them were healed by a natural faith, but only one came back and was saved. The salvation of that only one that came back was due to a supernatural faith. And a supernatural faith involves the action of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the supernatural faith. Jesus lived from faith to faith, by faith, but a supernatural faith, not a natural one. Jesus didn't live by a natural faith, because if he did, the time that the devil said, transform these stones into bread, he would have done it and shown him, okay, look at this, I did it, and now? No, Jesus lived by a supernatural faith. A supernatural faith sacrifices not only the physical, but above all the spiritual. Because in that moment, he was desperately hungry. 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything. He was definitely very weak. And he could have done or transformed stone into bread. But he was resistant. He sacrificed his ego and said, no, man shall not live by bread alone. Dear friends, we are speaking here about eternity. We are not dealing here of a project, a personal project for a life of 70, 80, 90, 100 plus years old. No, we are speaking about a project that is for all eternity, which is the project for the soul, because the soul doesn't die. When you have any sort of pain, this pain is in the soul. It's the soul that is suffering. Of course, you take care of the physical body, but it's the soul that feels pain. Now imagine you, a soul that dies without having become a new creation, without having become a new soul, because that's what God says, I'll give you a new heart, which is a new soul, a new spirit. And this is only possible through the supernatural faith that requires that we sacrifice above all our inner being, our mind, our ego, our pride, our arrogance, our vain ways, our personal opinions, that we sacrifice our selfishness. So, if you have the intention to, to have or to project your life for all eternity, then you have to sacrifice your ego. 
because how can the Holy Spirit come upon a person that keeps within themselves a resentment that they don't want to let go of? They are difficult to deal with. They have a difficult temperament to deal with. And how can He come? How can light and darkness be together? You are in darkness and you want to receive the Holy Spirit that is light. It's not possible. First, you have to remove this darkness, but this is only possible through the blood of Jesus. You sacrifice your being on God's altar. This campaign of Israel, this sacrifice that the person you go to the altar with is that. It's not for you to sacrifice money and properties because this will all be left here and it will all catch on fire and you end. But not the soul. The soul that is placed on the altar, that is sacrificed, the person sacrifices their the ego, then yes, they receive a new heart, a new mind. And they stop being that old person to become a new one. And this person will live by faith, from faith to faith, for all eternity, because that's what God has as a prize to those who overcome. The Bible says that it's in the gospel that we find out God's righteousness, which comes by faith. God's righteousness comes by faith. You become righteous by faith, but a supernatural faith, not the natural faith that religion preaches. So, the, the holy text says that by the deeds of the law, the law of Moses, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for the righteous live by faith, but it's a supernatural faith, a supernatural one. Do you know what supernatural is? It's something supernatural, it's something that is not let's say, is not so available, so obvious to everyone. No, it's only for those who truly want to sacrifice their all, their whole life, for all of their life, in order to then receive the promise of salvation. This is very strong. And God says like this, now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, if anyone repents, then my soul has no pleasure in him. No pleasure. That's it. Therefore, dear friends, let us go to the altar with this understanding. It's either all or nothing. It's either yes or no. Because if you only place on the altar what is material, then it will go back to you because God won't let you luck. He won't be indebted to you or to anyone. However, when you place all of your soul, all of your being, all of the essence of who you are, all of your opinions, everything that on the altar, the spiritual side of who you are, then God gives you a new soul, a new heart, and a new spirit. And that's when we start to live from faith to faith and for all eternity. May God bless you. May God open your eyes, your understanding, in order for you to understand that He is a spirit and that He answers the cry of the afflicted ones, he heals the sick if they manifest a simple act of faith in his word. But in order to conquer eternity, you have to sacrifice your inner being. All right? Tomorrow we are going to be speaking more about this. You have to be born of the Holy Spirit. Only by being born of the Spirit that this is possible. 
and being born of the Holy Spirit is the birth of the supernatural faith. The Holy Spirit was the faith that moved the Lord Jesus, the supernatural faith that moved Jesus, and this is the faith that has to move you as well. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.